Stearman is the latest aeroplane to be examined by Flyboy Mutton Chops, aviator for the masses. Chief Flight Instructor Dennis Simo shares his stories and Stearman for the betterment of all mankind as we make our way to... Flying a bona fide warbird for the first time did not disappoint. private grass strip. And that's me. And that is my aviation mentor. And I'm in the cockpit of the coolest plane I've ever flown. The legendary Stearman. I've been working hard building up my tailwheel chops to fly warbirds. And here's the story behind that first flight. Dennis is the chief flight instructor at Spectrum Airways. So what are we looking at here, Dennis? What we have is a, uh, is a Boeing Stearman, properly called an A-75. It was uh, designed as a primary trainer for World War II. In the end, they cranked out 8,500 of them, starting in 1939, finishing off in about 1944. They were uh, designed to be hard to fly, uh, in the sense that they were hard to see out of, they were hard to control on the ground, they are quite a top-heavy airplane. But how'd you end up with this one? Completely by accident. Uh, one of my instructor's fathers started the project over 25 years ago and it just languished in his hangar. My instructor mentioned that he had it and I said, great, let's go take a look at it. And we opened up the doors and there's all these dusty parts, little bits of tin hanging from nails everywhere. And I said, I gotta have this thing. This is, you just can't leave this not being built. We uh, built it over almost three years with a lot of friends involved. Every Thursday night was Stearman night. There was always pizza, chili and beer on the go. And over time it took shape. All right, so let's go fly it. Okay, okay, let's cut the music. You have to hear this. If you don't love the sound of a big radial engine firing up, I think you might be a little dead inside. All right, you might as well talk to you too, dude. Okay. So stick all the way back. Yep. And just go down the right side of the runway. Okay. Remember, an airplane always wants to turn left a little bit, so you might as well let it. So, from the back, I actually have a better view. Taxiing is quite difficult from the front. Yeah, I can see that. But at this point, I'm going by memory. Should I, should I be zigzagging so I can see where I'm going? Well, if you do, that's the classical way. So you zigzag enough to see where you're going. Yeah, I just can't remember how far away the end was. So one thing that you can do that's going to be really beneficial is just get used to the sight line. Yeah. You know, this is what it looks like in the landing attitude. It looks like nothing is what it looks like. Well, and really it is. So what you're doing is you're using your peripheral. Don't bob your head back and forth. Keep right, it okay. centered. So, I mean, this would be what you'd be seeing if you were landing a Spitfire or a Mustang. Exactly. Same thing. And that's why it was an adequate training platform because the warbird's hard to see out of too. So yeah. why make it easier on the student, right? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, right about here and then turn? Yep. Just coming up on temperature there. You verify we're about halfway in the yellow up there on the oil temp. Yeah, you got the same instruments back there? I do. Okay. What you don't have up there is a tachometer. Right. You don't have a starter button. Right. But you have everything else. Okay. Go back, Chuck. Wow, I love that the switch up here actually moves. Uh, picture, Chuck. There's even a carby over here under your elbow. Right. So, we take off Chuck left to right. Trim is neutral. Picture is rich. Control lock is off. Fuel valve is on. Mag draws post. Altimeter set to the field. It's 850 feet here. Right. Master strokes are on. Tolls are free and correct. Yep. Seats are secure and harnesses are done up. 
affirmative. All right. So, basically, you could do it one of two ways. You could push forward as we get moving and lift the tail up a little early so you can see where you're going. Or you could just hold it in a neutral position and it'll just fly right off the runway. Uh, Either way, you're trying to pin 60 knots, at least 60 knots, before you start climbing out. Okay, well I guess for my sake I'd want to see where I'm going as soon as possible. Alright, so just start off with a stick about there. Okay. Alright, as soon as the tail lifts up, just try and hold it in a level attitude. Right. Make sure your heels are on the skid plate. Do not okay. keep your feet up on the pedals. Heels are on the floor. Yes. Okay. Alright. Yep. There we go. There we go. Oh. I guess that's normal? Yeah, sometimes. And up we go. Awesome. And then it'll bring the throttle back to climb power. It's out of field to test fly the airplane you just built. Scared the crap out of me. I had heard so many bad things about it, how hard it was to fly and everything. I have about seven or 800 hours of tailwheel time, mostly in Super Cubs, and it's just a big tailwheel airplane. But the one thing I noticed is after I took off is, is my hand was really sore and I took it off the stick and I couldn't unclench it. It was like shaped in this claw and I was flying with the other hand so I couldn't even massage this one to get the, and I was stuck like that, literally. And for like five minutes, I couldn't straighten my hand. But then I realized all I had to do was relax. It was perfectly normal. It really hasn't scared me yet, but I picked my battles. He's far right rudder than I thought. Yeah? Yeah, it's like a constant right rudder, eh? Pretty much until you're in level flight, and then it'll, then it'll ease off somewhat. Right. Wow, this is awesome, man. Yeah, this is flying, man. This, this is flying. <laughs> I love this thing. No radios. Hopefully no runways, you know, just grass strips or open fields or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and it's very honest. It's, uh, you know, there's nothing really tricky about the airplane. It's top heavy and it has a narrow gear. So if you let it get out of shape, it's just a lot harder to get it back. So uh, the work is in keeping it in shape. Yeah. You know, if you're sloppy, lazy, or distracted, it will get away on you. Introducing power, yeah. Yeah, once you're up in the air, the extra power really doesn't do much but guzzle gas. Yeah. Right, I let's just start a climbing right-hand turn. Yep. Up to 1500. That's a lot more right rudder than I thought. Well, for, yeah, for right-hand turns, when you're yep. climbing, it takes a fair bit to kick that adverse yaw out of it. And any of you guys that are film savvy are going to notice that this camera keeps disappearing and reappearing because James, my director, would not let me do this flight without getting a shot of my mug. So during the flight I was juggling this camera from here to here with the suction cup mount to get the over the shoulder shot which I also needed. Alright, steep turn to the left. Yeehaw! Pull the nose up, pull the nose up, there you go. And I have to admit, James is right, it was fun to have this shot to see my reaction to flying this airplane. And just to be clear, I never mess around with cameras while I'm PIC. In this case, I was training and making a film at the same time. Yeah, baby. Awesome, man. Awesome. Up in the air, it's just like a, a bit of a sluggish Super Cub. Yeah. Nothing else different about it. Like after the Super Cub, I thought this would be harder. It was really light on the controls compared to what I expected. I mean, looking at this thing, it looks like a beast. I thought it would feel like a beast. And it's just the most gentle, just tiny bits of control pressure. Yeah, with all this wing, it, it really, you can feel it picking up lift every time it hits a thermal. Yep. And any time it hits a, uh, a gust from the front, you can almost feel the airplane slow down here. You're almost pulled into the straps. Flying this airplane is visceral. It feels like a butterfly or something. It just is connected to the air. You feel the wind. I mean, you literally feel the wind on your face, but it's not like overpowering unless you side slip and it's like, then it's blasted me. He showed me that this airplane can almost fly sideways because it's got such a massive rudder. So you put it into a side slip at one point and it was like, then you realize how much air there really is coming at you. So one thing that this does well is slow down because it's got so much rudder. Right, wow. We coordinated with our friend Jamie to do some formation flying, hoping to catch some air-to-air -air footage with my friend Rob in the back. That's where you don't want to see the enemy, eh? Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. It's kind of scary. <laughs> it was a pretty bumpy day, so we didn't get much usable footage, but it was fun. 
Pass to Austin, man. Wow. So you want to follow us down for a little pass over Curly? Yeah, we can do that. So no flaps, obviously, right? Oh. So thanks for watching. Part two is going to be all about learning how to land this thing. A huge thanks to all the supporters on Patreon. And we're currently running monthly contests with the sponsors. This month's prize is worth about 200 bucks. So check out flightchops.com for details. And I'm proud to be working with Open Airplane. As a rental pilot, I'm very excited about this fundamental change to the way we rent aircraft. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. You want to leave this thing going? Uh, for the flight home, maybe not, eh? What do you think? I mean, it's not going anywhere. Oh, it's not going anywhere, but... Yeah, uh, then let it roll. We'll leave it. All right. If you need to grab it, grab it, and we'll sort it out. I'll fall it off.